Hey well watchers, um, thought I would give you guys a, uh, it's not really a shake and share, um, but I'm here in, uh, my old home, uh, uh my old house in my, the room I grew up in, um, occupying quite a lot of a twin bed, um, and I figured now might be a good time to finally, uh, do the video I was thinking about doing a little while back, um, with regard to, um, uh, you know, doctors and health and some stuff like that. So, uh, originally I was thinking I was going to do a video where, um, I reacted to a particularly, um, you know, uh, sexy, uh, doctor on, uh, who is on YouTube and has quite the following, um, you know, and, you know, he had some posts or some, some videos I watched where, you know, he made some, you know, very sort of, you know, um, he was called out for them being fat phobic. I don't really, I, I don't, I phobic is not really the word I would use for it. Um, you know, but just sort of that knee jerk, you know, uh, medical profession thought of, Hey, you know, fat is bad. Right. Um, so originally I was going to do sort of a, you know, a, a response to that, but really I, you know, I felt like, um, you know, as I started to think about it, it was really more of a, um, it, it morphed into more of a, you know, how some of the systems, um, you know, failed, you know, me particularly growing up, you know, um, and, and, you know, again, failed is not a great word, you know, <laughs> but, um, so anyway, let me just sort of dive into it and, you know, we'll sort of go from there. Um, and yes, my hand may get tired, uh, cause I don't have my, um, selfie stick with me. Um, so you may see me, uh, adjust every now and then, and I apologize for that. So, um, anyway, so a couple things to know about me, first of all, um, I grew up, uh, on top of an Appalachian mountain. Um, I had a half an, uh, half a mile walk to the bus stop, uh, each morning and it was uphill both ways. Um, and that's because there were two hills. So it was also downhill both ways, but, um, anyway, um, so that's to say that, you know, like I sort of grew up, um, you know, walking a lot. My legs were always, you know, a very strong part of my body. Um, you know, uh, and then also, you know, this is the area, you know, where growing up I, you know, rode a bike. And so I biked in this area. So that's a key point to come back to later. Um, but the other things to know are three things. Um, one, um, you know, these are three medical issues, right, that uh, sort of, um, you know, play into this. One, I have a genetic skin condition called epidermolysis bullosa. Um, it is the mildest form of this. There are some people who have this who cannot leave their house. Um, you know, I have uh, amblyopia, um, which means, um, in generic terms, it's lazy eye. But for me, it actually switches eyes. It's not always the same eye. Um, and then the third thing is that I have a very bad uh, ragweed, goldenrod allergies, right? Um so these are three medical things where, um, you know, growing up, one, the amblyopia, like, I didn't discover that until uh, I was in, like, 10th grade, where I just happened to be in a biology class that had an eye chart, and I was at pretty much the right distance, and I just sort of, like, leaned my head on on my eye, you know, or my hand, um, um, my yeah, head on my hand covering an eye. And notice that, like, the other eye could not really see the chart well. <laughs> um, you know, but, it, you know, but it did manifest itself with, you know, one eye looking off, you know, that could switch back and forth. So I don't know how, you know, no one caught that, you know, before 10th grade. Um, for the epidermolysis bullosa, it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s that I got that officially diagnosed after I did a little bit of WebMD sleuthing and finally, you know, found a dermatologist and a doctor who would say, yes, this is exactly what you have. But what happens with the epidermolysis bullosa 
is that, you know, for my version, the hands and feet, the skin um, separates very easily, right? The layers of the skin. And so, like, I could get a blister, you know, on the palm of my hand just from, like, opening a 20-ounce soda, right? So, um, so again, this will play uh, in later. Um, but all through my life, you know, like... Every time I went to a doctor about this, they were like, oh, that's normal, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it was not fucking normal, right? Like, other people can open a soda without tearing their skin. <laughs> um, uh, and then the the allergies one, you know, that's just fairly straightforward. But growing on, to up, on top of an Appalachian mountain uh, with woods and, you know, all sorts of, you know, weeds and everything around you know, kind of happens a lot, <laughs> um, that these allergies kick in. Um, you know, and again, you know, no one, you know, when I went to a doctor about it, it was just like, oh, it's just seasonal allergies, right? Which yes, it is, but it's also a very specific allergy type, right? And again, it wasn't until I was in my late thirties that I actually got allergy tested, you know, to find out exactly what, I am allergic to. Um, so anyway, so why am I saying all of this? Well, you know, with the, uh, you know, the videos from the doctor online, it was very much about, it very much got me to thinking how, you know, when I needed them in my youth, they weren't there for me, right? And so what happened was, you know, that I went off to school and in my state, you have to take gym for all four years. Um, it's supposed to be graded on, uh, you know, on you know participation and effort. It never is, so it's almost always skills based, right? So think about what you you do in gym. A lot of you play basketball and baseball and football and things that take aim, and take you know, um, you know those types of things which. My amblyopia, I have very poor depth perception because of it, right? Like, when I look at a baseball, when I have my head turned sideways, my eyes start fighting. And it's like, the ball is here, the ball is here, the ball is here, the ball is here, right? So, skills, I'm out. I'm not, you know, like, my eyesight just does not make it work, right? And then, you know, so, again, gym is supposed to be participation and effort-based, so, you know, most of it is all these sports that are skills-based. And then you have things like physical fitness. And as part of, you know, these physical fitness courses, there were things like chin-ups and rope climbs and, you know, things like that where I could literally feel the layers of my skin tearing. And it didn't matter that I didn't have upper body strength, to, you know, or did or did not have the upper body strength to climb up a rope or to pull myself up on a chin, if your grip is just disintegrating before your very, you know, or you can feel it disintegrating before your very eyes, you're not going to enjoy that, right? You know, and then other things were like running. Let's run outside. And we did used to do cross-country runs like around the perimeter of the school. And guess what's around the perimeter of the school? Oh, yeah, <laughs> goldenrod and ragweed and everything that makes it so that I cannot breathe. And so, you know, when I would ask doctors for, you know, notes for excuses, they would look at my husky self and be like, oh, he's just trying to get out of gym and, you know, basically tell me to man up, you know, and, you know, basically it's like thinking back on it, it's like, okay, the doctors are not, you know, helping your PE teachers who, you know, potentially have the potential to inspire an interest in exercise and physical activity are doing everything in their power. Like for me, like, like why, you know, like I biked everywhere around my, my neighborhood. Right. And, you know, like even when I was older, I loved biking, but biking wasn't an option you know, in, in your middle school and high school, you know, like, gym classes. Like, why isn't that? Like, why isn't, why isn't the goal of phys ed classes to inspire 
an interest in physical activity, right? Whatever it is, um, you know, instead of these, you know, very specific, very, you know, skills driven, you know, and or, you know, um, specific strength moves, um, driven, right? So, so anyway, you know, that's sort of like what I was thinking, you know, what I've been thinking about for a while is, you know, it's like all of these systems are set up in a way to, you know, basically, you know, push, you know, push back against any legitimate, you know, issues, um, you know, and basically tell, you know, that husky child, you know, that they are, they're the problem, right? They're not, you know, you're failing them in gym, even though they're trying their hardest. So that's not going to encourage them, right? Like I had one year in middle school where I had a teacher who actually graded the way it was supposed to. And he had a weightlifting class, you know, a weightlifting group that met like after school. And I actually like went to that for a number of times because it was like, oh, hey, like this guy gets it, right? Like, like maybe I could learn something here. And then like the immediate next year I had, you know, asshole gym teacher, you know, who immediately started, you know, giving me C's and D's, even though I was doing exactly what I was doing the year before. So, but yeah, so it's just, you know, like we, you know, if, you know, if doctors are going to come back and be like, oh, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, like, we need to work on reforming the systems that let us get there. Um, and, you know, um, yeah, I don't, like, it's just, you know, maybe it's better now, I don't know, you know, but, like, you know, there should be, you know, like, if someone likes to skateboard, that should be enough for physical ed, you know, phys ed in, you know, in school. If someone likes to ski, if someone likes to cycle, like, there should be some way of doing phys ed such that it's inspiring and, and, and uh, you know, and even if it's just walking, right? Like, hey, just, you know, go for an hour long walk. Like, you know, I mean, how many times does the doctor say nowadays, oh, just get like 30 minutes of walking in, you know, and that's, you know, that's great for you and everything. So why isn't that good in high, you know, in, in school? Why does it have to be running? Why does it have to be this stuff? Um, so anyway, I don't know. This, you know, th this topic's been sort of weighing on me and I've debated, you know, how formally I wanted to, you know, rebut, um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, some of the statements there. I mean, I've talked before about, um, sorry, gotta switch hands. <laughs> um, you know, I've talked before, you know, about how for me, you know, the mental health aspects of being heavier outweigh any of the physical, right? Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, so that's just, uh, you know, my, uh, sort of rambling two cents on that. Um, and, you know, here's, you know, a lovely, lovely view of, of the big old belly. So, um, all right. I will talk to you all later. Bye.